to 2004, George W. Bush, Republican, presided as President of the United States. During his first term, the Senate changed from equal in 2000 to Republican in 2002 to 2004. A widely debated domestic issue in 2000 was the presidential election between Al Gore and George W. Bush. On the night of the election, it was clear that Florida was going to de determine the race. The votes had come down to 573 of a total of 6 million votes. The candidates did not know who had won yet, but because of different TV networks, they publicly predicted that Gore had won Florida, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. The Republican co committee quickly informed everyone that Florida was still in play and, and Bush was able to gain enough electoral college support to win him the presidency. The recount was insisted upon by the Democratic committee because Bush had won on such a small margin. After one recount and Bush winning again, the Democrats sued for another, but the Supreme Court denied it and Bush became the president. Another domestic issue was the Prison Rape Elimination Act of 2003. This was passed unanimously by Congress and widely supported. This act provides an analysis of incidences and the effects of rape in all prisons, state and federal. This act also gave the funding to protect individuals from prison rape. After the success of this act, an act to permanently eliminate rape from prison was drafted and seen in Congress. A major piece of legislation passed during 2000 to 2004 was banning the use of federal aid to fund abortions. This was originally passed by George W. Bush's father, George H. W. Bush, but repealed by Bill Clinton. The act that prohibited late-term abortion that removes the fetus while intact was put in place in country and abroad. This also included partial abortions that involved delivering the live fetus until the head or torso is outside and discarding of it. A second piece of legislation is the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001. This act is to provide money for extra educational assistance to children living in poverty. This set the basis for the set standards with measurable goals that will improve the outcome of schools. There is no federal national achievement standard, but the states develop their own. This act also expanded the federal role in public education by annual testing, annual academic progress, and report cards, all funded by the federal government. The major foreign policy issue of 2000 to 2004 was the 9-11 attacks on September 11, 2001. The Twin Towers were located in New York City's World Trade Center. Each tower was 110 stories high and contained 10 million square feet of office. On that day, the International Islamic Terrorist Network, Al-Qaeda, hijacked four commercial planes and committed a horrible terror attack. The third plane was crashed into the Pentagon, but by this point the passengers of the fourth plane heard the news and were able to take the, the plane back over and crash it into an empty field in Pennsylvania. 2,753 people died in New York, 184 people died at the Pentagon, and 40 people died in Pennsylvania. The building's exploding right now. You got people running up the street. Okay. I don't know what I'm going on. This led to the second major foreign policy issue of 2000 to 2004, which is the war with Iraq. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. The U.S. invaded because of alleged possession of weapons of mass destruction and support for the terror organizations after 9-11. Bush told the president of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, that he needed to leave Iraq and give up the weapons. Saddam did not leave or agree to the diplomatic resolutions. Bush declared an invasion of Iraq in 2003, and that became the first stage of war. The invasion lasted from March to April because the U.S. military was quickly able to invade and defeat the Iraqi military. The 2000s to 2004 marked the turning point for American culture by arts, public opinions, and achievements throughout these time periods. With popular songs such as Oops, I Did It Again, Cry Me a River, and Hey Ya, the 2000s were brought to life with the sweet sound of new age pop and rock and roll. Where rock in the previous century brought sounds of heavy metal instruments and guitars that were made to be smashed on stage, the new age of rock and alternative rock took the world by storm, meeting with new and old artists that adapted to the new music industry.
Going down the top 10 list of rock songs in the year 2000, we are greeted by songs like Miss Jackson by Outkast. In the End by Linkin Park. So high, and, so and Stand by Eminem. Dear Slim, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. In the year 2001, songs like Survivor by Destiny's Child. Last Night by The Strokes and Get Your Freak On by Missy Elliott debuted. In 2002, there was Lose Yourself by Eminem, Clocks by Coldplay, and Work It by Missy Elliott. In 2003, there was Hey Ya by Outkast. Crazy in Love by Beyonce and Where is the Love by the Black Eyed Peas. And finally, in 2004, there was Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson and Drop It Like It's Hot by Snoop Dogg. Drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. On September 11th, 2001, a tragedy shook New York City. The American people and the world watched as the World Trade Center was turned into mere ash and rubble as two planes dove toward the Twin Towers. This day, forever immortalized by the horrific terrorist attacks, changed the way Americans looked at personal security and other people's cultures. After the attacks, Islamophobia reached an all-time high for the past hundred years. Following the attacks, the American government began retaliation against Muslim states in fear of another attack. On October 7, 2001, the U.S. led an attack on Afghanistan. On October 26, Bush signed the Patriot Act, which gave the government power to search private records and arrest suspects with the fear of another attack. In 2002, the United States began arresting and imprisoning individuals with suspected terrorist ties at the Guantanamo Bay detention camp. That same year, NYPD began secretly surveilling mosques in the tri-state region. And finally, as the attacks on Islam culture began in 2003, the invasion of Iraq was underway. Another important change in culture came the controversial topic of gay rights. Following a timeline of events, gay rights were frowned upon by the American government and people throughout the beginning of the 21st century. From the years 2000 to 2004, cities and states began banning same-sex marriages. However, in March 2004, the first gay couple publicly and illegally wed in Portland, Oregon. As the years passed, more and more people began to accept same-sex couples. And after years of protesting for gay rights on May 17, 2004, America's first gay marriage, fully authorized by law, took place at Cambridge City Hall with Tanya McCloskey and Marcia Kaddish. While the world began revolutionizing with new technology and print and paper became irrelevant, books, novels, and imaginative mediums still remained a popular source of entertainment. Books like Harry Potter and The Goblet of Fire, written by J.K. Rowling, released July 8, 2000, and Angels and Demons, written by Dan Brown, released May 15, 2000, became the most popular books of the year, especially with the massive Harry Potter fanbase behind the popular J.K. Rowling series. Movies like Cast Away, directed by Robert Zemeckis, featured actors Tom Hanks, Helen Hunt, and Paul Sanchez, released on December 22, 2000. And Finding Nemo, directed by Andrew Stanton and Lee Unkrich, featuring Albert Brooks, Ellen DeGeneres, and Alexander Gold, released May 30, 2003. And finally, TV series such as Friends, featuring Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, Matthew Perry, and David Schwimmer, renewed its seasons from 1994 up until 2004. And CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, featuring Lawrence Fishburne, Marge Hellenberger, and George Eads, began and continued their series from 2000 to 2015. For sports, in 2001, Tiger Woods' win in the Masters made him the only golfer in history to hold all four major championships at the same time. The other three were won beforehand in the year 2000. In 2002, the famous fight between Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis took place. The economics during the 2000s in the following four years took off on a positive note and then tumbled downhill from there.
This can be seen in the GDP, unemployment, inflation rates, and the stock market. A recession would have begun in March 2000 when the NSDAQ, National Association of Security Dealers Automated Quotations, crashed following the collapse of the dot-com bubble, which is a speculation in the growth of the internet. Because the internet was an innovation and not well understood, it came with a lot of speculation. Investment in the dot-com bubble, a circle of online websites, eventually bursted with several websites deleting due to lack of confidence. The most difficult years were 2000 to 2001, precipitating the worst years of the American recession. The 2000s experienced a recession due to many factors. The manufacturing sector is the most important place and source of this recession in the U.S. economy. In 2001, its profit margin fell to its lowest point. High-tech sectors such as telecommunications equipment, microprocessors, and computers are at the center of overproduction problems. But traditional industrial sectors such as the steel industry and the textile industry have also been hit hard, and other non-manufacturing industries that have a close relationship with them, especially tele telecommunications and business services. Increased unemployment rates were fueled by the recession. Unemployment rates increased and hit their peak at 2003 at 5.9%. Inflation rates dropped from 2000 to 2002 and then climbed up from there to 2004. The average gas price during this time was about $1.06. Stocks took a dip and investments in the 2000s that were once valuable lost thousands of dollars, especially in 2002. Although the Bush administration's tax rebate policy in 2003 and the sharp rise in military spending due to the Iraq war have accelerated the economic growth rate this year, the average economic growth rate in 2001, 2002, and 2003 was only 1.9%, and the recovery is still on track. The GDP growth rate jumped to 4.4% in 2004. Even so, the level of actual non-residential investment in 2004 has not recovered to the level of 2000.